Okay, partial fraction decomposition. So basically, um, basically, uh, well, let's we're we're gonna break down this um, denominator here. Okay, and what they usually do, they usually teach it in. Uh, they usually they usually teach it in uh, calculus too when you do integration because you can do it by uh, logarithm. So let me just see here real quick what uh let's see I need a what a positive two and a negative one right there. Well, basically um, to decompose a, a fraction like this or I mean what well, it's not even I mean it's a rational expression but to uh, I guess what we're trying to do is make uh, separate terms out of it. Okay. Now, so basically, what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, hunt down A and B. Okay. And once once we hunt down A and B, we'll be able to do a very simple integral uh, of you know uh, you know like whatever over x over two. You know, and it usually turns out to be the logarithm or something. So I I'm not even going to worry about that in my videos. I mean, we know how to do integrals. Um, you know, let's just let's just learn how to how to do partial fraction decomposition. Once we know how to uh, break a um, you know a rational down into partial fractions, th then we're fine. Okay. So let me. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this. Okay. I'm just going to rewrite this on another piece of paper. And this first case is an easy one, and it deals with linear factors. Okay, and there and there are several different scenarios uh, if you want to break a rational expression into term by term fractions. Okay. Now, when we say linear factors, um, notice how when I factored uh, my original uh, expression out, um, I have an x plus two. That's a line and x minus one. Well, that's also a line. Okay, so um, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna assume that there is a uh, you know a, a way to do this. Okay, and so we'll just write it like this, like I have. Uh, the first thing we need to do though is get a common denominator. Okay, so we get the common denominator. That's all I really need to do. Okay, now that I got my common denominator, I don't even have to rewrite this denominator. So I'm just going to carry everything down. And the next thing, um, the next thing I need to do is I'm going to multiply all this out. Okay, so so you know whatever's in the top, I'm I'm going to go ahead and multiply it all out. So that's going to give me ax minus a plus bx plus two b. Now this three, there's something kind of interesting about this three over here. You know, really, this is, I mean, this is a polynomial as well. Okay, it's just missing some of its terms. Okay, well, that, or some of its terms are just have zero as a coefficient. So, um, basically what I want to do is I want to match up my x to the one terms. I don't have any x squared terms, uh, but but we'll we'll, we'll see in uh, a few more examples that that happens. Uh, so basically, I will have a situation where zero x is equal to a x plus b x. Now since I got uh, x's on both sides, I can just divide them out, and I end up with a plus b equals zero. Okay. So whatever a is, b has to be the negative. Okay, just just for observational purposes. And then my next uh, my my x to the zero term is just a lone three. And then here's all my x to the zero terms over here. I got what a negative a plus two b. Okay. Well, this is just really simple to solve. And a matter of fact, uh, since I have a negative a over here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and in this equation right here, basically I end up with a system of equations. Okay. Um, well, basically, I'm, I'm just going to uh, 
solve for b right here, so I'm just going to move a over. So that means b is going to be equal to negative a. b is equal to negative a, then 3 is equal to b plus 2b. So 3b is equal to 3. So the only way that that's going to flow is if b is equal to 1. Okay? So it looks like a in this case is equal to negative 1 and b is equal to 1. Okay, now that's a really simple example. The hardest part of, of partial fractions is probably multiplying this out, you know, things can get messy, and solving the equation. Okay, so let's go back in here and we had what a was equal to negative 1. Okay, so, and I guess I might as well just rewrite uh, this original expression because I have time still. So basically, um, you can imagine how integrating this would be a pain in the butt. As a matter of fact, I don't even know how you would integrate that, okay? But this one, this would just be the negative natural log of x plus 2 and you just integrate the uh, natural log of x minus 1 there and that and that wouldn't be too tough or you or I mean you know the integral you know the antiderivative would equal that I'm sorry but like I said that's usually the first place you see it that's why they introduce you to partial fractions is because it does make integration in in some sense um, a little easier unfortunately Partial fractions are pretty tough, so I'm trying to put as many examples in as I can, okay? Um, and, and like I said, in those examples, I'm not even going to worry about integrating this stuff. I mean, we know how to integrate, you know, negative 1 over x plus 2. It's just, let's just worry about the par partial fractions, you know, for now, you know, because, you know, then, then we'll just go back to integration, okay? All right, well, thanks for watching. i got plenty more coming.